All right, guys. So welcome back to part two. It's going to end up being two of two um, for the power commander, mid pipe, and servo eliminator install. So the last video, I pretty much showed you guys how to install a power commander. That's all laid in there now. Um, now I have the side fairings off, as you can see. I have all the bolts laid out for each side of the fairing on the left and the right. Um, started off, once that was done, basically disconnected the, um, the pipe. I started from the back forward. And then once I got the header nuts loose, came down and then the oxygen sensor ended up being the biggest pain in the butt ever. It was really stuck on there. Um, I had the hardest time in disassembly with getting this thing disconnected. Um, once I did that, the just holding the pipe in my hand, it was extremely heavy. Um, after I ended up getting the muffler box cut off, I think it, it must have dropped like 8 to 12 pounds, something like that. So here's the piece that you buy. It comes with these two clamps and then a nut to secure the pipe to the middle of the chassis over by the other side and then the two clamps basically where the muffler box was I already kind of did all the work so when you get the when you get the header pipe off the muffler box sat probably about to here and then the back part of the pipe came off so basically um, once you cut that off you have to do a lot of grinding so you basically cut across here and then the muffler box sits right where my hand was. And you have to cut the pipe all the way up against the weld of where the muffler box was. And then you'll notice the big problem is that there's these four welds, one, two, three, four, that come across here. You have to grind those down about an inch or an inch and a half back, or these will not fit over the top. And then in addition to that, these, you kind of have to squeeze these two pipes together to get it to fit over. And what proved to be the biggest pain in the butt, more than cutting off the muffler box, was inside there was a honeycomb, I guess resonator, whatever you want to call it, that looks like, when you look at it, it looks like you could just take some pliers, stick the pliers in there and twist it around and crush it and pull it out. But it's so hard, it was like rock solid, so I had to get a, um, a swiveled spiral like wood drilling bore bit like a speed bore bit. And I took that down and I cut a, I drilled a, I had a 12 inch drill bit, drilled a hole right down the center of each side. And then I took that speed bore bit and I drilled all the way through each side. And then once I had a solid hole through each side, I kind of just took the drill and then slowly worked my way out to the outside of the pipe till I was hitting the stainless steel on the outside. And then just to make sure that there was no crap in there to get sucked into the engine, I took the air compressor and just, you know, went down each header, put it, the air pressure up high, blew all the crap out, did it from all, every side, every opening. So there's nothing in there now, it's clean. So it's basically, at, once I get this back on, I'm gonna be performing like a full exhaust. Then I have these um, header, I guess manifold crush gaskets, whatever you wanna call them. Um, got some new ones and just to have a little bit of an insurance policy for myself to make sure that there's no leaks from the exhaust. Cause after you do all this disassembly and cutting and do all this work, the last thing you want to have to do is put it back on and to discover that there's a leak only to have to take it all apart and do it again. So you can go to AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts. They have this stuff called Ultra Copper Advanced Formula Maximum Temperature Gasket Maker. Um, so you can take this basically, it comes with a little nozzle and take a bead of it and then I would say put it kind of around here just real light and these fit exactly right on top and then that'll make sure that they're not going to leak and then I'd, if you were really hardcore you could get a little dab on your finger and put it up in the header and put it a little bit up there too um, that way you can kind of ensure there's going to be no leaks I'm actually going to, I don't know if I should or should not do this, but I'm going to do it anyways, I don't care. I'm going to take a little bit and put it around the edges of the pipe here and on the inside here just to 
help double protect myself. Um, and then get my slip-on back on. And then once I get everything finger tight, then I'll go back up to the front. It's, if you're, you need to use a torque wrench for the header bolts. It's 14 foot pounds of torque for all eight of those bolts that go across here. And then the rear hanger for the exhaust you use right here, kind of underneath where the foot brake is, right where this oxygen sensor hangs down, right by that rear swing arm connector and behind the engine here, that's where you're going to mount the exhaust. And then the slip-on part goes back on just like it was. And I already have the power commander on. The other thing that I was going to show you guys is the servo eliminator. So what that does, I already had the slip-on, so the servo was already, and the wires for it were already taken out, but the motor was still on there and it was still plugged in. So this is what the motor looks like. It's not heavy. So, I mean, you get a little bit of weight reduction, but it weighs like one pound maybe. Um, and you can see that's where the servo cable hooked up. They would go down to the, the muffler. And that's where, right where you disconnect this from the computer. You plug in the servo buddy. It's right here. I have it zip tied one, two, and three times. And then there's a little compartment for it behind the brake fluid reservoir. I just zip tied it to that so it doesn't get loose or anything like that. So I've got the power commander in, servo buddies in. I'm going to put the exhaust back together and see if I can get it up in there tonight and then get the fenders and the side fairings back on and see if it starts. And then I, uh, that's pretty much everything. I'll get everything back reassembled and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. So I used my torque wrench after I got all my header bolts on. This is going to be hard to see with this light. But after I got all my header bolts on, I went and I did them finger tight and I did 10 pounds of torque. And then I went up to 14 and I went all the way down 14, clicking on the torque wrench, left to right. And I went back right to left 14 again, make sure they're all equally tight. And then you want to come up with a flashlight and kind of take a look down where each of these holds on the header pipe and make sure that they're all perfectly lined up because these brackets that hold this up don't, they have a, uh, I guess a tendency to not sit even. So make sure those are all even. And if they are, you should have about the same amount of thread coming out of each of the end, out of the end of each of these bolts, which mine looks like it's pretty much dead on accurate there. So then after that, come around. And like I was saying, right underneath the brake lever here is the bolt where you're going to hold on the back of the exhaust. And if you're smart, like me, you put this oxygen sensor screw back in before you even put the header bolts in or it'll get all twisted. So you don't want to have that twisted or in the way. Um, so that'll be nice. But that's already done. And then after you get that done, it's just a matter of getting the slip on mounted again and you're done. So I'm going to kind of do that right now and then I'll show you guys. All right, let's grab this bolt. Hmm. I need more wrenches. 
tools. Apparently you can never have enough tools. Alright. So this bolt probably gonna be the same. The header bolts, by the way, are 12 millimeters. So are the so is the rear um, bolt for mounting the exhaust back. And I believe I have a 12 millimeter one in here. Should be this one right here. And it is. Easy. That's what I like to see. I bet you money I'm gonna need this extension. I'll tell you what. This is supposed to give you an 8% increase in the performance of your bike, but it does literally nothing for the aesthetics. The fairings cover where the muffler was. You can't see the servo eliminator, the power commander's under the seat. It's in a bunch of work that really pays off, but you just don't really see much of it. So, coming down over here. Hope I got the right this. Hope I got this on the right side. Looks like I do. You just mount this bolt through, and then take a wrench. Make sure it stays in the back. Get it on finger tight at first. Really, considering that the header just got on there, this is all that holds the back on is just this one bolt, but it weighs nothing. That muffler box weighed a ton. All right, so hold that there. This guy on here. Are tools. I have just beyond the basic tool set. There we go. <clears throat> that sucker's on tight. Alright, guess what? This exhaust is going nowhere. Alright, now. Let's start rebeautifying her. So, slip on right here. I'm really hoping this fits as well as it did before. Oh yeah. I think we're gonna be good. Get this thing out of the way. This is my concern. I have the M4 mid-pipe, but a two brothers slip-on. So this is about to be the ultimate test of will it fit? <sighs> Looks like it might, but it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Actually, I think I'm gonna need to scoot that way back. There we go. Bitch. All right, so, oh boy, does it ever fit. Um, it goes really far down, further down than I think is needed. So, I'll show you guys what I mean. So right there, there's a gap. So to eliminate all gaps, it's gotta slide down to there, which is easy, it's not a problem. But it will go all the way down to the oxygen sensor, which we don't want that. I think it's just gonna have to sit right about here.
And the other question is, what way to twist this so it looks prettiest? So that's got to sit like that. I think like right there. guide for where this goes exactly. I just want it to look good. I'm kind of questioning whether these should go in the front here or in the back like this, which I don't think is going to work at all. So they definitely go in the front. I remember this being a little higher up. I'm guessing this is also a 12 millimeter. About to find out. YOLO. It is. I'm glad I started in the front, but this is a pain in the back because it has to sit exactly right. I think that's good. I like where this is. I feel like the exhaust comes back slightly more than it did before. Let's take a look. It looks right. It doesn't look bad. I feel like something with the exhaust tip is sitting different than it did before, but I think that's because the muffler box is non-existent. So, only one way to find out. From the headers to the mid pipe that is unmovable so it's really just a matter of do you want to sit here or there I think we're going to go with right here and the nice thing about it is there's no gaps which I like to see yeah boy the right size. After this, I'm putting the fairings back on. There's one more there. I need a larger bolt. Wouldn't it be nice if everything was the same size? This one fits, there we go. It's tight. Everything's really tight. Hanging well. It's not moving. And it's 
not moving. Everything is snug as a bug in a rug. Technically, I could start the bike right now. We'll see if an engine code pops up. No engine codes. That's good. All right. Honestly, it seems like it's going to be a little nightmarish to get the fairings back on, but I'll do that. I'm going to put the fairings on. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done.